if you find romantic relationships the most painful thing that you have ever experienced in your life what that means is this. hey everyone cheryl here welcome back to my youtube machine this week we're doing something a little bit different it's not an instructional video it's not how to it's not leading you through steps it's a uh, bit more of a, a personal video i suppose you could say what i realized that i hadn't done is really explained um, from reasonable start to reasonable finish what my journey was in overcoming my dating drama and i share this in the hope that it's helpful because there's no point doing it if it's not helpful and when i was really in my dating drama in my early 20s i remember not being able to see myself in anyone else i remember looking at relationship experts dating experts and it seemed like they hadn't really struggled maybe they had they just weren't sharing that but that's what it seemed like to me and i really it perpetuated this feeling of being you know alone in it and, and this feeling that there's something wrong with me i can't figure it out other people haven't struggled other other people are teaching me all this relationship stuff and it, relationships have been easy for them or i had the example in my own life of, of friends and people like that who were in the, their dating drama as well so i had the people who were you know teaching on relationships and had never struggled and the people who were in their dating drama and haven't overcome it so i hope that it's helpful for me to go through what that process was so that you can see yourself in me and vice versa and really see how I overcame that. So I'm going to share a little bit of my story. I'm not going to share all of it because it's not this is your life. I'm going to be as succinct and concise as possible. Keep it really uh, tight. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Keep it really tight and, and to the point. I don't have to tell you everything that happened, everything I've been through. Um, but suffice to say, I will be telling you about the things that are specific to relationships. So I suppose the first time that I really knew I had dating drama was probably somewhere in mm, college, I would say, college around 16 to 18. I mean, before that, we all have the teenage stuff, right? The early teenage years and it's awkward, and it's difficult and all of that. And we referenced the inner teenager last week. So if you didn't see last week's video, do go ahead and watch that. I think it was last week's video. Anyway, unless it was an IGTV that I did or an Instagram live on Valentine's Day, maybe it was. Who knows where that information is on the internet, but it's somewhere. So we talked about the inner teenager and how that can be kind of this awkward phase and we many of us go through that and it's a whole thing. For me, I really knew relationships caused me a lot of pain uh, when I was in college, 16 to 18. And that was a very difficult time. And then it just perpetuated after that. And and I started drinking heavily. I started getting into drugs. Um, and it was interesting because I went from being like very bookish and very studious to being a party girl, which is a real departure from, from how I'd been and who I'd been. And through all of this, I didn't know at the time, but unresolved trauma and adding on top of that alcohol and drugs and you name it and really bad choices and relationships. It was pretty chaotic for a good period of time. Um, now I grew up in England and at 18, I went to Canada for a year. At 19, I went to Australia for a year. Um, and then between 20 and 24, I was in the UK again. And then at 24, I emigrated to Canada. That's significant because when I was in Canada, I got a job working for a company and initially I was in administration for them and then gradually worked up to doing their internal comms and uh, events and then publicity ultimately, um, which I built a career on for a time. But when I was planning events for this company, there was a very conscious, uh, very uh, awake CEO and he wanted to take the whole company of 2000 odd people through um, a coaching program. And I was the one planning it. So ultimately, that's where I got my start in personal development. The person leading the training was, uh, I always describe him as like the South African Tony Robbins. Uh, I think maybe today that analogy doesn't sit as well, to be honest. Uh, but he was South African, uh, very um, uh, masculine and very uh, awake, spiritually connected. And was basically a spiritual teacher masquerading as a corporate trainer. Anyway, point is... That's where I got my start in personal development. So I then went to therapy. Um, I think I must have been, let me get this right, 20, maybe 25 or 26 when I first went into therapy and uncovered all this unresolved trauma. Now, all this trauma that I had was relational trauma. It was caused by other people. 
And so at that point, um, I hadn't quite connected the dots between what I'd been through when I was younger and the pain I was experiencing in relationships. I hadn't really connected it. It wasn't until, uh, it must have been around that time actually, maybe a year later or so. Yeah, maybe I was 27, 28. Yeah, I'm trying to think what job I was in at the time. It's somewhere mid-late 20s anyway, after this kind of awakening and getting on the personal development train and going to therapy and counselling. I started reading up about relationships because I made a decision that um, the person that I was involved in a romantic entanglement with, I made the decision that that was something I was really going to change and that that pattern was not going to repeat anymore. So I acknowledged that there was something going on with me. And I read all these dating books and to be honest, they just gave the strategy like this is what you do and this is how to do it. But there was no real reasoning behind it. There was no like explanation of this is why you're doing this and this is how to heal it. It was all just strategy, which ultimately has influenced how I teach today. So I was reading up on that. I was reading all the books, going to all the seminars, doing all of that. And... Um, <clears throat> It was at the age of 29 when I quit my then career in publicity. I'd left the original company. I'd gone on to work for a PR firm, the biggest in the country in Canada at that time. And then I'd quit at 29 to start up a coaching business. And, you know, this is that business and here we are today. Um, so that was about five years ago now. But around that time, I really just put myself into my work. I didn't really focus on relationships that much. Um, and the coaching I was doing <clears throat> was publicity based anyway. It was kind of this publicity coaching hybrid model that I created. So it wasn't until I came back to England when I was 31, when I encountered someone with whom I was really forced to look at my relationship stuff. That person and that, well, that journey has been well documented here on the YouTube machine, twin flame, karmic person, however you want to call it. And ultimately that was the point when I had to look at my relationship stuff. It was around that time when a little bit before actually I really got into astrology and understand what a lot of my soul lessons are which are around healing my relationship stuff and teaching others to do the same which is what I'm doing so keeping to the soul contract check and it was at that point that I really started to develop the process that I teach today which is to figure out you know what is my pattern where does it come from and how do I heal it and I really use that on myself but that period of time when I was healing that relationship stuff was the most difficult time of my life. There was a bit of a dark night of the soul that happened, which is a bit more spiritual and less practical, but it was a really dark time looking at all of that and um, working to overcome it. And it wasn't a straight line. You know, I went to, again, lots of events, lots of retreats, um, therapy was involved, um, not so much coaching, but really coaching myself. Because at that point, you know, I'd been coaching other people for a long time. I had the skill set. I didn't really need a coach on that. Um, I used a lot of different tools and tried a lot of different things and, and really, really got into the heart of like, okay, well, where did this come from? And because I'd had a lot of counselling at that point, I was really familiar with my journey and what I'd been through. And then I was able to connect the dots forward, backwards and then forwards. So I connected the dots backwards to what I'd been through and then connected the dots forward in terms of how that had manifested in my relationships, uh, particularly with romantic relationships. And so that brought me up until, brought me up to the point about two years ago when I ultimately decided that it was time to start teaching on relationships. And I did that and closed down my publicity business and started teaching on that, at, started teaching on this. And that has taken many different forms from, you know, the twin flame stuff um, and the more spiritual side through to what I teach today, which is very practical, but also very grounded in um, soul stuff, let's say. Um, I try not to get super woo and esoteric um the way i teach is very grounded anyway it's very based in psychology but make no mistakes it, there is a real soul deep reason why i do this and i'm certainly very connected to what i believe in up there in the cosmos and you know whatever you believe in whatever your higher power is obviously you can you know use that terminology that resonates for you so i think that takes me about up to present day so really for me the process was um is a process of I don't want to sound really pretentious and say awakening, but there was kind of a waking up that happened. There was a, a moment that got me into personal development and made me really look at myself. And actually, now I'm remembering, I just got this image in my head of the, the workbook from the, um, 
the coaching event that I was organising. It was a series of events. It was 50 five-day events. So 50 three-day events and 18 three-day events. Five days, three days. It was a lot. It worked out as being like, what is that, like 78, 68? All over North America. It was an absolute bitch to organise. <laughs> it was really hard to organise. Um, but, you know, we, we helped a lot of people and, and I think, you know, lives have changed, um, including my own. So, yeah, I got into personal development and in that workshop, I remember writing in the workbook, it was different things about ourselves that we really want to look at and change. And, and I remember writing down a bunch of stuff around relationships then. So I, I knew it was there on some level, consciously or unconsciously, I knew it was there. So, yeah, that brings me up to present day. And, um, you know, it's interesting. I got a couple of comments recently asking about my relationship status and I'm not dating anyone at the moment and part of me feels a bit sheepish about that part of me feels like I would be a better, better example for you guys if I was like look I did all this work and now I'm in the relationship and there will be a time when I am and that's going to be really wonderful and I'm going to be able to teach from that place then and as I grow in my um, healing of my own relationship stuff I will then add to my body of work what I'm learning along the way along my journey because none of us are gurus <laughs> you know we're all just humans learning our lessons and teaching others what we know um, and really when you have a coach or a teacher or or a whatever you really only need them to be a couple steps ahead of you you don't need them to be some kind of ascended master we're all humans, right? So yeah, there will be a time when when that is the case and that's going to be a beautiful thing and I will teach from that place. What this period of time serves as though is a real validation to what I teach, which is that this is about the relationship you have with yourself and actually a lot of the time when I've coached people, they choose not to be in a relationship afterwards. They choose to be in a relationship with themselves. And it's also really out of whack when we have this perspective of like, you judge someone's success by the relationship that they're in or the fact that they're in, whether they're in a relationship or not. There's a lot of people in really toxic relationships. There's a lot of people in unhealthy relationships. There's a lot of unhappy people who have a, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, wife, husband, and they're miserable and they're trapped. And there's people who are on their own and they're really happy. You know, so it's not a gauge on someone's level of awareness or where someone's out on their journey. It's not a gauge of any of those things. It's um, it's about the relationship we have with ourselves. And it takes a lot of strength and a lot of courage to make a choice to work on yourself so that when you are in that partnership, you're the type of person you want to be. And also, if we got the relationship that we wanted, right, if you got the relationship that you wanted and you hadn't done this work on yourself, all that relationship would do would trigger the hell out of you and you'd be forced to look at your stuff then. So there's really no way around this. And, you know, I certainly am not willing at all to let my expertise be judged on the relationship that I'm in. Absolutely not. Um, and also this work is... It impacts every relationship in your life, your friendships, your relationship with your co-workers, with your family. Every single relationship in my life has improved as a result of doing this work. Of course, the relationship with myself has and the relationship with other people. And all these relationships we have with other people is preparing us for the partnership, right? It's all connected. And so that's what I have to say about that. What my experience is having overcome my dating drama is that I feel really free. I've got a lot of time and energy to put into what I'm passionate about, which is a number of different things. Um, and being free from that emotion, that pain, that like racing thoughts, that really consumes me for the vast majority of my life, having overcome that, I have a lot of space, a lot of time, a lot of energy to do what I want to do, to build what I want to build, to create the life I want to create. And that's a really beautiful thing. And so that's what this is about, really. It's about freeing up that space that you're spending worrying about, you know, the, the love interest du jour. That's really what it's about. It really is. And then as we do this work on ourselves, we become the type of person who attracts the person that's on the level that we're on. And if we get really honest about the type of person we want to attract, we've got to be on par with that. We've got to be 
on the same level. That's not to say, oh, you're not worthy until you do blah, blah, blah. No, we're, we're worthy and we're worthy and we're worthy and we that's the situation. And if we want someone of a really high caliber, who's really self-aware, who's really done the work, who's in a really, really good place in their life, we have to do the foundational work on ourselves, the groundwork, so that we're in that place as well, because like attracts like. Well, this turned out to be a longer video than expected, but I hope this was helpful. Um, this has been, overcoming this, overcoming dating drama has been the biggest win of my life. And I know for the people I work with, for the women I work with, it's the same for them. It's this feeling of, I didn't think I could overcome this and I did, therefore I can do anything else. And nothing that anyone has to throw at me, has to say about me or whatever else, nothing is challenging compared compared to what I've been through, compared to what I've overcome. And also, side note, closing wisdom. If relationships are the thing that you're the most stuck on, if you find romantic relationships the most painful thing that you have ever experienced in your life, what that means is this is what you're here to work on. This is what you came here to work on. I'm not going to get uber spiritual about soul lessons and all of that, but if it is the most difficult, it is what you're here to work on. And that's what it is. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.